Welcome to my video about paracetamol or acetaminophen, depending on where you're from. Um, this is the professional version where I try to learn you something about paracetamol. We will um, cover all these uh, different subjects if you're more interested. Uh, there's also a patient version, which is a little simpler, more uh, to the point. So feel free to uh, check that one out, subscribe if you like the content, and let's go. So I first want to start with a little disclaimer. Um, this video is solely meant for informative purposes. It's not uh, medical advice. Always contact your own uh, treating physician if uh, any questions or if you want personal advice. And names and brands and dosages may differ between countries. So please uh, check your prescription and uh, status in your country. So. Now let's get into the video, um, the synonyms and brands. The USA is called acetaminophen um, as generic name, brand name is Tylenol. In Europe um, it's called paracetamol as a generic name. Common brand names are Panadol, Anadin and Mandanol. It's all the same, just another brand. It's available on tablets, capsules, drinks, syrups and uh, injections, which is very uncommon but it exists. And paracetamol is used for several different indications, but mostly uh, to lower fever or to treat pain. Now let's first focus on the fever part. Um, it's used when someone has the flu, the common cold, or even after vaccinations, and it may lower the fever and make someone feel better, and therefore it can be prescribed. Usually, however, it's prescribed in pain, and for all kinds of pains, so headaches, toothaches, nerve pains, menstruational pains, anything. Other indications are atrocious, uh, mostly hip or knee, and off label it can be used for migraine, uh, which we get into a little bit later. Some, some advice uh, paracetamol is effective uh, within 30 to 60 minutes after oral intake and uh, uh, rectal intake may take some longer, usually uh, one hour and a half. So if we're looking at the pain treatment, uh, this is a step-by-step -step approach in which the first step is paracetamol. If this uh, gives insufficient pain relief, there are contraindications for paracetamol, one of the other steps, or there is a specific indication, for example, uh, some serious illness like cancer, may need stronger painkillers like opioids and then you skip the first few steps. So if any of these reasons, please go to the next step. So first step would be paracetamol, if insufficient, then NSAIDs like ibuprofen, diclofenac. They also um, slow the, they have anti, um, I lost the word, uh, anti-inflammatory effects. So this may also be very useful. Next step will be tramadol, which is a weak opioid. Um, it's preferably combined with NSAIDs and paracetamol to even enhance the effect and to probably um, lower the amounts used so you experience less side effects of the tramadol. Next step will be oral or transdermal strong opioids, uh, mostly morphine uh, or fentanyl. The last step, subcutaneous or intravenous strong opioids, mostly morphine. And this is for uh, when experiencing really a lot of pain. Then off-label, it can be used for migraine. Um, this is only done when someone is experiencing a migraine attack. Um, and you can give 1000 milligrams. Uh, we will come to the dosage later. First step is always paracetamol. Uh, this is the cheapest, uh, it's equally effective as step 2 or 3, and the cheapest, so there's no reason not to start with paracetamol. If, however, the effect is indesirable or, or um, not enough, you can go to step 2 as IDs or even step 3 oral triptans. But keep in mind, paracetamol is equally effective with less side effect. Then, We go to the dosage and usage. So always lose, uh, use the lowest possible dosage, which still is effective. 
what do you recommend to your patients? Uh, when do you use it? Preferably on an empty stomach, then uh, the resorption is the fastest and your effect is the fastest, usually in 30 to 60 minutes. If you ate something, it works um, as well, but it takes long. Then you need to have at least four to six hours between doses um, to get the correct levels and to not to overdose. And how long do you use paracetamol? Usually till complaints are over, but if this takes more than five days, maybe wise to contact your physician. When you use it for headaches, uh, please make sure this is only for short-term use. Because if you use it more than three months, then you can get the famous paracetamol and use headache. And then you need to stop using it, of course, to get rid of the headache. Uh, migraine, then you only use it when uh, the person is experiencing attacks. And when you have more than two attacks a month, it may be wise to contact your treating physician as well. Because then you maybe need to take other kind of medicines, uh, preventive ones, like beta blockers. We've done in the safety, driving uh, minimal amounts of alcohol and any food are allowed. If you want to combine paracetamol with other painkillers, please make sure to contact your treating physician if this is possible. And regarding the pain and the fever, um, if you're an adult and you want to use paracetamol orally, tablets of 500 to 1000 milligrams are recommended at time and then every four to six hours you repeat them if necessary. Drinks and syrup are 20 to 40 milliliters a time to a maximum of 125 milliliters a day. Rectally it's 500 to 1000 milligrams again every four to six hours if needed. However there are some uh, exceptions. Uh, the maximum dose is four grams a day uh, if you use it sporadically, um, if you use chronically, you should only use two and a half milligrams because you can otherwise uh, induce liver damage. I see that my face is before the <laughs> bullet. So, um, if you're less in an, an adult and you weigh less than 50 kilograms, uh, there's alcohol abuse, malnutrition, dehydration, liver insufficiencies, or the syndrome of Gilbert then uh, it's recommended to only use 60 milligrams per kilogram or two milligrams per day. So take that in account. Move myself back. Now for children, it is a bit different. Uh, orally, 10 to 50 milligrams per kilogram every six hours to a maximum of 500 milligrams a time. And rectally, it's 20 milligrams per kilogram every eight hours. If you use paracetamol for migraine, um, make sure to use 1000 milligrams at a time to uh, really get the positive effects of paracetamol. Do that every six hours. And for occasional use, the 4000 milligrams is allowed. This is an example of how to do it. You use your 1000 milligrams, you wait six hours. Maybe you skip it because you're not feeling that uh, bad. And then here you take them again. We go to the next point, the interactions. Oh, sorry, side effects. There are not a lot of side effects, um, only if you use it um, at, with injections, then you have more than 10% chance of pain and a burning sensation on the injection place. But most people use it orally or rectally, and then uh, you don't have this side effect. Here we see very rarely, so less than a percent chance on these side effects, mostly stomach ache, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, itching, skin rash, and many more. Um, feel free to stop the video and take a look at them, but take in mind it's rare to see one of these. And even more rare, less than a tenth of a percent are the following. Um, the hypersensitive reaction, but also uh, the liver damage. Uh, nearby it's important to note that the person needs to be using more than 6 grams a day or 3 to 4 grams chronically. So take that in mind when prescribing your patients. Then the interactions. Um, there are several. 
the moment, name the most common ones. First of all, if you combine alcohol, um, paracetamol, and enzyme-inducing drugs, so rifampicin, barbiturate, tricyclic antidepressants, among some others, this may uh, more easily cause liver damage, and this is due to accelerated and increased formation of toxic metabolites. So please, um, if you're prescribing any of these drugs in combination with paracetamol, always ask uh, the alcohol consumption of your uh, patient and make sure to act accordingly. Then long-term uh, use, so more than, more than four days use of paracetamol and high dosage, so at least four grams a day, may lead to enhanced anticoagulation. Um, so always check INR values one week after stopping paracetamol in patients where this is necessary. Then we go to the pregnancy and lactation. Paracetamol is safe to use during pregnancy, will not harm uh, the pregnancy or the, the child. Passes through the placenta, but this is safe. But it's recommended to minimize the dosage and the duration of use. Same can be said about the lactation. Paracetamol passes through breast milk, but is safe for the newborn child but also minimize the dosage and the duration of use. And contraindications, actually there is only one, which is serious liver insufficiencies. So if your patient is experiencing a, a child pox score of more than nine, um, you cannot prescribe paracetamol and you should use any of the other painkillers. Here I added a little diagram which uh, helps you to identify if your patient has the child pox score of more than nine. Any last warnings and precautions? Um, we already talked about this, but kidney and liver insufficiencies, acute hepatitis, syndrome of Gilbert, chronic alcohol abuse, dehydration, chronic malnutrition, and sepsis um, may lead to uh, liver problems when, used, when you're using paracetamol, so please, uh, please be cautious with these. Um, if your patient uses high dosage, uh, more than recommended of paracetamol, it may also lead to liver damage, so more than 6 grams a day, or 3 to 4 grams chronically, so please be cautious with this. And lastly, long-term or frequent use may lead to paracetamol-induced headaches, or may last uh, longer than five days, and high fever uh, lasting more than three days. Both are reason to contact a treating physician and to stop using paracetamol. And lastly, some kinetic properties. Uh, feel free to pause them um, if you want to read them through. Uh, I will name them uh, swiftly. So paracetamol doesn't have an anti-inflammatory effect. The resorption uh, orally is quick and entire and rectally slower. Therefore, if you take paracetamol orally, uh, the effects are way quicker. Dmax is half an hour till two hours. Uh, protein, protein binding is uh, almost non-existent at therapeutic doses. Metabolism is mostly done by the liver, elimination by urine. And uh, in, two, in a two and a half hours, approximately, uh, the amount of active paracetamol in your body is halved. So, this was my overview of paracetamol. Um, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you like it. I will be posting weekly videos of uh, certain types of drugs and uh, therapeutic options. Thank you. Give a like.